Hi, I'm Mish Barbara Way. And I'm Kenneth. And we are from the band White Lung, and you are live in limbo. This is Andreas Babiolakis with LiveInLimbo.com, and I am pleased to announce that I'm here with members of Canadian, actually Vancouverite, um, punk band White Lung. I'm pleased to meet you. How's it going? Hi, we're great. Thank you. And I just wanted to say as well, congratulations on the Polaris Prize nomination. And Thank I you. mean, that's that's really exciting for, you know, like, Polaris Prize is one of the greatest exports of Canadian music because you get everything under the sun. It's not just whatever is kind of popular. You get everything under the sun. And to be a shortlist nominee and, you know, possibly win the prize, I mean, how does that feel? We're very honored. We're excited to, uh, we're excited we actually can perform at the Polaris event. So we'll be doing a festival in Chicago the day before and we're going to scoot right on over to Toronto. Kenny, are you excited? I'm very excited. I've always wanted to go to a gala and uh, it's nice to be nominated with so many other cool people. And for quite an album as well, I mean, Paradise has gotten a lot of accolades since it dropped April 6th. And, you know, for something that's less than half an hour long, you know, it's considerably punk rock to a degree. I know it, it kind of varies off the grid a little bit, but I mean, you're getting a lot of recognition from, you know, like not just Polaris Prize, but even Rolling Stone has given you guys a lot of a lot of shout outs. So, I mean, again, to be to be like this band from Canada getting all this kind of all these kinds of hits, I mean, it's got to be great. Yeah, it's, um, we'd be lying if we said it wasn't great, you know, or it's always nice when your work is appreciated. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're so proud of this album. Yeah, I mean, it's good, so I'm glad that people also like it besides me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's always nice. We know we like it, so it's good the the, the a lot of people agree. Speaking of which, I actually caught your set during, I believe it was during NXNE or CMW, and uh, I mean, it was in a, in, a, in a much smaller club, and I thought it was like a terrific show because you guys have like such energy live. Mm -hmm. How are you going to be able to transfer that from like a small club to something where it's outdoors, loud, something I weigh home? Well, I used to use the magic of alcohol, but then I realized that that doesn't make um, your vocals all that great. So you have to, in moderation. Um, it's a different thing. I mean, I, I get a lot of excitement doing the festival thing too. So it's just a different kind of energy and it all really depends on the crowd too. And I mean, you can keep your sunglasses on and shut your eyes and pretend you're in a, in a dark nightclub too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of weird because there's people that have no idea who you are here or just kind of wandered over from watching, like, Avicii or something at, like, some other uh, tent. But um, people are generally here to have a good time, so... And we want to give them a good time. Exactly. How do you do that? How do you give people a good time? What are, your, what are some tips you can give to maybe some of the other artists that are probably strolling past as we're in this area? By playing loud, by playing aggressively, by being exciting, by not standing there not moving and being boring by putting on a goddamn show. Damn right. Leave them wanting more. In and out fast. Not longer than 40 minutes and you're out. Kenny, you got any ideas for this? Like your own end of things? You know, just uh, looking stylish, uh, sick riffs, <laughs> um, good moves. Uh, yeah. Got it all figured out. <laughs> Now, at Way Home, is there anybody you're excited to see? Is there anybody where, as soon as you were part of the lineup, you said, okay, once we're done, we're running over to this side at this, at this booth area, and we want to catch these guys? Well, there were some bands that we would have liked to have seen, but unfortunately, they're not on the same day as us, and some later acts today, but we have to jet off because we have to be in New York tomorrow, so we don't get to stay and enjoy things, unfortunately. We're on tour, so that's the, the shitty part. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I, something else you also tackle, and as I believe is giving advice, as mm -hmm. um, you could find online through Twitter or Facebook or anything. So for the people out here, or to any at any of the other shows you're at, you know, in this extreme heat, what are what is some advice you could give to staying healthy, taking care of yourself? Plenty of water, lots of sunscreen. Between, if you're gonna drink all day, 
You have to have water between every two drinks. You have to have at least a glass of water. And um, what's my last one? Do you have any to add? Yeah, drinking all day is hard. Um, you can't stop if you start. You have to keep it going or you're going to burn out and you're just going to pass out in your tent. It'll be boiling hot at 8 p.m. You'll wake up at 3 dehydrated, uh, so don't do that. Listen to Mish. Water between every two drinks. Um, loose, breezy clothing. And uh, you should eat something. You should eat. Yes, you have to eat. Don't forget to eat. That's what people always forget at festivals. They forget to eat because they're too busy going bananas. I snuck eat. in a series of sandwiches, so there I... There you go. You're good. Already, already following your advice well before you said it. Yes, good. Speaking of keeping things going, to get into a little bit more serious territory, uh, the band's been around since like the middle of last decade. You finally reach it to this point. Back when you guys were starting out, what was something that kind of kept you going? Like, to reach a point like this, did you ever think you could get to like maybe a point like this? Like... What was the kind of process with the origins of the band? Well, the way the band started, it was Anne-Marie, the drummer, and myself, and yeah. two other girls, and we were around for probably three years and didn't do anything. I went and lived in the Netherlands for a while. We didn't take it seriously. We were just, who cares, having fun. And uh, the real band didn't start until Kenny here joined in, at the very end of 2009. He forced us to get excited. We wrote a record. We got on a label. We started touring. And not until you're touring is anything going to happen. Then again, I still always looked at music as something I would just do for fun and try to keep my life on the side. So it's very nice to see that we can actually do this as a semi-career now. I don't think any of us really had that in mind. We were just doing it because we liked playing music with one another. Yeah, I mean, we've already done so much, like, we've gone to so many different countries and stuff. Like, at this point, it's just like, everything that happens is a blessing. We're right. all like we're very happy that we get to go to all these other countries and play shows and stuff. So, I mean, life is uh, good. We're appreciative, nice Canadians. You gotta be nice Canadians. It's it's the archetype we've got to follow. Mm -hmm. It's and, not a bad one. It's not. And speaking of nice, I've got to say, you know, congratulations on the big accolade you just got. That, Thank you. Uh, and, and you, you're you were considered, I guess, by by your by your band member here that. You lit a fire up and everyone's asses and you got the band going. How does that feel? Good. It feels good? <laughs> I don't think he did it intentionally. It was just his presence. You know, he was a great guitar player and got us all excited. And It's I'm, not like he came in and started, you know. Yeah, I didn't come in and start, yeah, bossing them around or anything like that. Just, you know. Just naturally charming and then made us excited. That must feel great then. How does it feel? Great. <laughs> there you go. It feels great. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So with this kind of focus, how do you bring that into the studio? I mean, you wrapped up the album. It, it dropped a couple of months ago, of course. But how does that transfer into the studio? Where it's like, right, we've got this kind of focus now. How does it work with each album? Is there like a set determination or is it do you just kind of go in there and you see what happens? Well, this record, we knew um, that we wanted to try a bunch of new things, hence um, recording it in Los Angeles. We don't all live in the same place anymore. So, you know, when it comes to writing, we're not four people in a room writing songs start to finish and going into the studio with 10 tracks. Kenny sends me snippets. He's working on stuff all year. And then when we come together to make the record, we treat it more like a collage. And we really wanted to utilize all the technology available and not be analog snobs and um, cut and paste and, and get the best version of the picture that we could. And that's what we did. Everything was written in the studio in the month and a bit that we spent there. We work well under pressure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I said it well. Well, working on the pressure, it kind of channels out well in punk rock, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. It's true. I mean, it's all the last minute energy and and excitement of things being immediate. Now, in terms of immediacy, to, I guess to wrap things up, um, it might be too soon to ask, but what? What's down the road for, for the band? Like, is, is that too soon to ask? Are you still kind of working on Paradise, seeing where that goes? We are, no, we are touring now. The record's done, we tour on it. So we um, have a lot more exciting things come up, coming up that haven't been announced, so I cannot officially announce them yet, but we are um, traveling to many exciting countries. 
And then eventually, once we are feeling bored of Paradise, we will work on another record. How could one be bored of Paradise? That's kind of a paradox. Yeah. <laughs> well, Paradise isn't perfect. That That's also true. Yeah. Um, and I guess as a final question for jovial reasons, is there any albums you guys are spinning right now? Anything that's kind of like got in your attention this year as of late? Anything? Kenny's probably got some. Let's hear them. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last new records that I listened to. The last new records that I heard that I liked, uh, the new Future and DJ Esco mixtape, love it. Uh, also the new record by Eagles, okay. which is a band that used to be on our the same old uh, punk label that we were on. Yeah. And uh, they made a very uh, different kind of crazy sounding record. Uh, not as aggressive, but uh, very cool songwriting. Uh, those are the last two new things I think that I that I was listening to. I've actually seen Eagles Live, they're actually quite good. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, Got terrific energy. Yeah, no, I'd like to see these new songs. I've, I've never gone to see them. They're from uh, London England. or Manchester or something, somewhere yeah. over there, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to check them out one day. <laughs> Speaking of raw energy, um, I can't wait to catch you guys again on, actually in this location, it's gonna be terrific. Yeah. Not not there, but like this specific right location, right in these trees, yeah. like this right is there. where we're playing. <laughs> uh, perfect, no, but here at Way Home, be sure to catch White Long Out, they're terrific live, and yes, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You.